Hello, this is Ryan Riccatelli with ASNews.net, and today I have Jeff Tobias on the phone. Jeff is a professional kiteboarder based out of Hawaii, and he and his crew just released a new video called Spare Change. It's a kite surfing DVD that just features these guys going around the world. So why don't you introduce yourself, Jeff? How's it going, everybody? Jeff Tobias. Uh, I'm here to talk to you guys about what I do, what I've been doing, and our new video release coming out, Spare Change. And right now, you're over in Hawaii, and, and where are you living on Hawaii? Uh, these days, I live on the north shore of Oahu at Sunset Beach. And so that's like your, is that your training ground right there? Yeah, it's, it's kind of the place. Unfortunately, I don't get to spend too much time here because we're usually shooting video and, and photos wherever the waves are good, but it's a good place to come home and, and relax. Some, you know, house right on the beach, get to get some surfing in and some time off in between trips. And you've been in the game of kiteboarding for a lot of years now, and you used to be one of the top competitors on that side of the sport. And in the last couple of years, you've kind of switched gears and gone more towards the, you know, search for waves. And you've actually, your crew's actually appeared on NBC. And why don't you talk a little bit about that transition and what made you focus um, your kiting on that? Well, I think I've actually been been doing this for, for a living professionally for about seven years now. And started out, you know, riding freestyle and, and competing in the on the world tour, and, and that was awesome. That was some of the best times of my life. I had a great time. But this is a time in life where you change your focus and your, your passions, and you can't you can't curb those things, you know. I loved competing freestyle, but kind of woke up one day and realized, you know, I'm not having as much fun at this anymore and and decided, you know, okay, well, what do I have fun at? And wave riding was kind of a natural progression. And, uh, you know, we didn't we didn't start wave riding with a kite, and we just decided that we liked it and we're going to progress it and, and try to push it as far as we can. And why don't you talk about the crew of guys that you ride with? I, I normally ride with... Martin Vari, Ben Wilson. When I'm here on Oahu, I ride with John Amundsen and Will, James, and there's a, a tight crew of, of guys here on Oahu that a lot of people don't even know of that are pretty much some of the best grippers in the world. Skip Wonderlick, uh, Dan Moore. and So uh, when I'm here on Oahu, I ride with those guys, but my, my mates are Ben Wilson and Martin Vari, and, and we do our travels together, and you know we've created a a new company called Alliance, and we're going to go out and just try to get the, the biggest and the best waves in the world and kind of explore the possibilities of what we can do with a kite on a wave. And talk about some of the countries that you've actually traveled to and, and some of the waves that you've found. Wow. Let's see. I'll just I'll talk about this last year because there's so many over the years in so many countries. This last year, in the making of our new video, Spare Change, we started out in Tasmania at a little break called Ship Sterns, which is one of the heaviest, meanest, gnarliest waves that I've ever seen in my life. And I uh, had some ups and downs and, and spent some time down there and continued on to Western Australia. Um, we hit Tahiti, Fiji, Chile, Mexico, uh, some Hawaii, Indonesia. We really, we pulled out all the stops, spent a ton of time and a ton of money searching for, for the best stuff. And the new video is kind of a, it's kind of a, a different vibe. It's not all action. It's not all just rider segments and go, go, go. It's kind of a story and, and a timeline of our year and what it takes to go to these places and what it takes to get the goods. And sometimes you don't get them. You know, you can spend a hell of a lot of money and a lot of time and, and sit in a place for two to three weeks. And so it's kind of the ups and downs and the highs and lows of a year of, of searching un, uncharted territory and, and trying to figure it all out. Where's the biggest wave that you found? Biggest gnarliest wave that i found is still the zoo in western australia and i actually head back there this tuesday um it's just an unrideable wave in any other form you can't surf it you can't even boogie board it um it's it's not something that most people would want to do and it's, it's not even it's barely a rideable wave but i've never had as much adrenaline flowing and as much of a rush as when you make it to the bottom of you know one of the bigger sets and it's rearing up behind you and and you just got to either try to pull in or get out of the way. So it's definitely the biggest and gnarliest wave we've found. But on another note, you know, we're looking for perfect, clean, nice waves that are you know, maybe a little more friendly, but just makeable ones. And places like Indonesia, um, Tahiti, at Chopu is actually a really good wave to ride. We've got some great footage of Martin at Chopu. Um, and 
and then Chile. My my last trip I went to was in Chile a couple months ago. Martin and I went down there. Just a land of left, left point breaks forever. Well, and that's what I don't think a lot of people realize, like what kind of equipment that you actually use when you're doing this. Sometimes you're strapless, and then sometimes you ride straps. And why don't you talk about talk a little bit about the boards and, and kites that you're using? The the boards and kites that we're using in kite surfing now, you know, we're learning as as we go. But what really works best for if you've got a perfect setup and a perfect condition, you know, a nice glassy smooth wave, it's just a regular surfboard. We've been lucky enough to have Surf Tech sponsor us, which they make uh, epoxy boards by all, some of the best shapers, pretty much all of the best shapers in the world, shape molds for them and make epoxy boards. They're strong, they're durable, and they, you know, they work like a surfboard. That works great. When you get into bigger waves or heavier waves, or if the wind makes the wind makes the wave a little choppy, then you're going to need straps. So we put stra- either put straps on those boards, or Slingshot now came out with an SRT board, which we've been working on for a while, which is shaped by Bill Johnson. And that's pretty much the board I ride when I need to put the straps on, when the wave's a little bumpier, or when you want to, you know, bust airs and, and get a little more gnarly. So are you riding unhooked on most of those waves that you drop into? Like, obviously, I've seen a lot of footage, and, and most of you guys are unhooking, and actually, like, almost, well, you are. You're surfing the wave. I, I'd say 90% of the time, I'm going to be unhooked, and that's just a preference. Um, there's much debate that goes around about whether hooked in is better or unhooked is better. When I unhook and your arm is extended out, you're not using the kite. You're pretty much just kind of holding on to it, and you're riding the wave more. It opens up your body, and you're, like you said, you're actually surfing the wave. And that gives it a different sensation, completely different sensation. When you hook in, you know, you, your butt sticks out. It's pulling you from your harness hook, which is right around your waist, and it changes your, your center of gravity. It changes where everything everything comes from it just changes everything so you're no longer really surfing the wave you're getting pulled by the kite down the wave so if the wind is perfect direction which you know we like side short maybe a little bit off you can unhook and you don't you don't need to be hooked in you can unhook and experience what it feels like to pump down the wave use a section use the curl of the wave and the speed of the wave when it gets a little bit more offshore or side onshore sometimes you need to unhook because you need the the full use of the kite to get you through sections and 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 out of the way, and you can get more out of it when you're hooked in when in those conditions. But you know what? If if you've got the, the opportunity to unhook, is definitely the way to go. Well, and with that said, you know you've obviously ridden some pretty huge waves, and I imagine it's probably a little easier just to let go of the kite, like at a place like the zoo, and 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 which leads into like what kind of what kind of consequences are you taking, you know, going after the type of waves that you're going after? Well, yeah, definitely, Ryan. The uh, unhooked, there's a safety factor of that also, and that's not always, you know, the reason why we're unhooked. But on on some of the bigger waves, you know, when you, you – there are consequences. You know, you can – with a kite, you can put yourself in situations and you can get out of them a lot easier than you can surfing. You know, you can put yourself in front of a of – a, 10 or 12 foot wave that's breaking on your heels and 90% of the time you can get yourself out of there now that's good obviously I mean but it also gives you a sense of false confidence to where you can get yourself in these situations and then all of a sudden something does go wrong and believe me it goes wrong at the worst time then you're stuck then you're in that situation and you're either holding on to a kite or hooked into it going through the line or you let it go and you're just free out there and you got to swim yourself through it so the kite is it's good and bad in that sense. It'll get you to where you want to go, and it'll get you out of gnarly situations a lot of the time, but it gives you an overconfidence, and all of a sudden you're in that situation, and you're going, oh, crap, you know, now, now I'm here. And I've had that thought go through my head, God, uh, dozens of times, especially here on the North Shore where the big days, no one else is out, and, and you're dropping in the 8- to 10-foot waves outside sunset, and all of a sudden, boom, you hit a piece of chop, the lip hits you, your kite goes, and you're three quarters of a mile out <laughs> to the ocean. You got to, if you want to go back to shore, you got to swim yourself through some pretty heavy stuff. So, and are you guys wearing leashes on your boards? You know, leashes on your board are are good and bad too. It's it's a preference thing. In shallow reefs, I never use a leash, and that's just strictly because your board will dive down and you'll rip the tail off on the reef. If I'm far out to sea, or if I'm somewhere where if my board washes away from me into rocks, then yeah, I'm going to use a leash. So I use a leash 
as much as I can, but it's it's also a, a bit more dangerous with a board dangling behind you. Well, and let's switch gears and talk about kites. What what kites are you using? Well, the slingshot fuels are my all time favorite kites in the wave. They're just simple, basic. They do what I need to do all the time. We're experimenting now, as you know. I'm sure everybody that's in the kite world knows. Is, you know, bow kites. Every, there's a big hype on bow kites. A bow kites, you know, they've got their benefit in strong, gusty, kind of you know, out of control winds. They're way more easy to manage and to control. Um, but in any normal wind that you actually want to go ride in, I, I ride a regular four-line kite, not even a fifth line, just a four-line kite, unhook it and sit there, and I try to use the wave as much as I can. Well, you know, let's also talk about, you know, this whole journey that you've taken has created a company, and that's called Alliance. And why don't you talk about why you guys decided to, to start Alliance? Well, being... You know, being a professional kiteboarder, you, you travel all over the world, and you, you're with different crew here, and you're with a different crew there, and, you know, sometimes it works with some guys, and sometimes it doesn't, and Martin Vari, and myself, and Ben Wilson found ourselves just always going on trips together, and found ourselves just connecting, and then we wanted the same thing, we had the same passion, we had the same views on how we thought it should be done, and the same views on, on the equipment that we thought we should use. So here we are deciding that we're going to pretty much spend, you know, our careers traveling together, and we decided to come up with a company, which was Alliance, which was the three of us coming together to form an alliance to build on something. The three of us had the same passion. We thought our energy focused together could, could build something. And the first thing that we built is this new video, Spare Change, which I'm a bit biased, but, you know, in, in my view, it's the best video that that we've ever done, and it's just a, a, a culmination of, of the three of us coming together and our passion. And the trailer is is really explosive. And for anyone who want who hasn't checked it out, you can check it out on kbmag.com, asnews.net, asnewswire.blogspot.com. You can go to our our podcast feed if you actually listen to this. We we syndicated it on our iTunes feed as well, and it's it's rather explosive. And I mean, the the intro and what's going on, and you know, you guys have are definitely turning heads with this. And where can people get more information or even purchase this video? Well, yeah, this video it was no holds barred. We we put everything into this video, including a, a lot of money. You know, we wanted to do it right. We wanted to do our first video um, on our own together, right. And so we spent, you know, tons of time, energy, and money on it. And it turned out really good. The trailer's really explosive. It's gotten really good reviews. If you like the trailer, you're going to love the video. Like you said, you can check out the trailer on all your websites there, or you can check it out and you can buy the video on AllianceSurf.com. AllianceSurf.com. You can purchase the video. Um, and we've also got distribution worldwide, too. Any slingshot store and a lot of other stores, too, that we've, we've worked out distribution with should be available March 1st in the store. So if you want to check out the trailer and get amped on it, do that, and then uh, you can you can put your orders in on AllianceSurf.com, and it'll be shipped March 1st. And, you know, this is the part that a lot of people don't realize, that there is a lot of work that goes into creating a DVD. There's, I mean, years of work. And so I know that you guys, a lot of the stuff that we're going to be watching was, was you know, shot, you know, months ago. And so now that this one is about ready to be distributed, um, what are you guys doing now? Well, you know what? There's no no resting. We've we've taken a, a couple weeks off, and we're straight back into it. Um, we, we, this is what we do. This is what we love. And, and I mean, this, this video, to me, is already, I've, I've seen it a hundred times, and I'm just amped to get on the next one and, and get something fresh out there for everybody. So we're straight back into it. We're heading back to the zoo, like I said, on this next Tuesday. And... The next video that I think we're going to try to do, I'd like to just focus on on what I like, and that's just the biggest and heaviest waves that we can get. I like I like it. It's what I like to do. I like trying to blow people's minds and show them something that maybe they wouldn't want to do, but they'd love to watch. So we're going to focus this next one, I think, on just big, heavy barrels and big, heavy waves and putting ourselves in the into positions that I hope we can come out of. Well, and I'm sure that it's there's going to be a ton of photos because there are a ton of photos that circulate throughout the, 
the kite birding world and even the mainstream world because I've seen photos of you guys in the Hawaiian surf magazines. Um, you guys tend to get a lot of coverage for what you're doing in the, in the crossover that you're promoting with surfers. And I guess, you know, this is one question I have for you because a lot of the people who do listen to the show, they don't just kiteboard. Um, you know, what's the crossover that you see? You're a surfer who turned into a kiteboarder. Why don't you talk just a little bit about that before I let you go? Right on. Well, that's I mean, that's huge to us. That's something that, that the three of us, and I know a lot of other kite surfers out there in the world are trying to do, is, you know, bridge the gap between surfing and kite surfing. Um, kite, kite boarding, surfers couldn't really identify with that so much. You know, they, it, it looked maybe fun, but it didn't grab them. Surfers are really, you know, they're open-minded people, but they're kind of closed-minded when it comes to their sport. You know, they are number one. They use surf, you skate, you snowboard, and everybody else it does something that they don't want to do. But we found something that interests surfers, and that's, you know, kite surfing on a strapless board or on your your strap tow board in bigger ways. They can relate to it the way we're doing it now, unhooking. It looks like a surfer on a wave. And there's thousands and thousands of places around the world where the wind turns on shore at noon. And being a surfer, in, you know, in California, on the East Coast, I know that, you get up at 6 a.m. and you surf, and then noon rolls around, and, and, you know, you go in and you play some video games, you take a nap, and you wait for that afternoon glass off. So what we're what we're trying to do is bridge that gap to where you can stay in the water pretty much all day if you've got the energy. You can go out and you can still rip three-foot beach breaks and throw harder splashes and, and longer floaters than you could surfing, and you can do it all day long when the wind turns on short. So I think we're getting a lot of, a lot of respect and a lot of... Um, a lot of coverage in the surf world now because it is much more similar, much more appealing to surfers. And, you know, i got to say thanks to some of our sponsors that have helped us do that. Slingshot gave us the opportunity to go out there and do exactly what we want to do. It was a risk for them, and they gave us that chance to do that. And, I mean, uh, we, we have to say definitely thanks to them. And with them giving that chance, we've attracted, you know, new sponsors. The three of us have just been sponsored by Reef which is a surfboard company, which is very difficult to get sponsored by a surf, you know, a surf brand. We picked up Surf Tech, which is, you know, they make surfboards, the plain and simple. They are as surf as it gets. They've given us a chance. So by, by getting sponsored by some of these companies, and it, it throws them in the surfer's faces, and they can see what we're doing and see what's going on, and, and hopefully we'd like to attract them and, and get them out there in the water and, and they can see what's happening. Well, and I think that's great hearing it straight from you, too, and I want to thank you for taking the time to come on ASNews.net and talk about Spare Change. Is there anybody you want to throw a shout-out to? Shout-out to the Alliance crew. You guys, we've, we've made it. we got the video out, and it's going to be a huge success, and I just uh, I hope everybody digs it. Ryan, thanks for hooking us up and supporting us through all this. Yeah, no problem, man, and please uh, stay in touch when you guys are out on the road. If you guys want to check in, I'm sure the listeners would love to hear what you guys are up to. Definitely. Aloha, guys. Take it easy. All right. Thanks a lot, Jeff. Right on. Hello, this is Ryan Riccatelli with ASNews.net, and today I've got Brian Shank with Ozone Kites USA. He's calling in from Utah, and Brian puts on the Ozone Snow Kite Free Ride Tour, and why don't you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about that? going uh i'm brian and uh the snow kite free ride tour is the only tour in the u.s right now it links up all the major events and uh, brings out public kite demos to kind of expose snow kiting to uh, the general public and uh, just create more awareness for the sport uh it also kind of gets everybody uh from the region together and have a good time snow kiting and where is where's some of the next stops um, this month in February, we've got the Snow Kite Rodeo at Georgetown Lake, Montana, and that's definitely one of our favorite stops on the tour. It's the home of the Kiter Cross Race, and uh, just always a good time up there for sure. And then there is the Kite Storm in Burlington, Vermont at the end of the month. You also have your event. Um, why don't you talk a little bit about that? Right on. We've got the uh, Snow Kite Masters, which is on the weekend of March 25th and 26th, and it's kind of like the uh, U.S. Open of snow kiting. We have a lot of the top athletes from all over the country, as well as newcomers and basically riders of all levels, and everybody can get out there and ride together. It's uh, a really big 
media event. Um, the big deal is that it, it's hosted by Chasta, and he usually hits the barbecue, hits the DJ booth, and then uh, gets out and rides with everyone. And for those of you who don't know, Chasta is the guy who, I mean, he's one of the pioneers of snow kiting, and he's one of the guys that you see, like, just jumping huge, and he's in basically all the magazines. And um, where can everyone find more information about this? Um, you can hit our website, ozonesnowkites.com. It's on the calendar, and uh, we'll definitely have more info posted on it as the event rolls near. And today, we have a special guest, and he just rolled into town, and why don't you introduce our guest? Well, today we've got Guillaume Chasta Chasignol, who's uh, in town to come snow kite with our U.S. crew. All right. Hello. Hey, Guillaume. This I'll just call you Chasta because that's what everybody knows. Uh, how are you, man? How are you, good? I haven't talked to you in, since yeah. a long time. A long time, huh? Yeah, in Minnesota, I think three years ago is when I met you. Yeah, in Minnesota, I think. At uh, the kite freeze, and and since then, I've uh, I've lived vicariously through you by looking at your photos and wishing that I could jump as big as you on a, on a snow kite. One day, one day for sure. Yeah, and so you've been just, I mean, you've been tearing it up, traveling around the world. I mean, I've seen pictures of you in just about every country. And country, yeah, for sure, to, to find a new spot everywhere. Tell us a little bit about, like, some of the latest places you've checked out. Oh, I was, I was just in, um, I just came back from uh, Chiki and uh, Italy, and, uh, wow, those, those spots are just, Perfect too for, for snow kiting. And what is the what's the snow kiting scene like? Is there a lot of people? Do you see it growing? Oh, you can see the difference for sure. It's growing. Like uh, like we said near Rome in Italy, there is many many people after work or on the weekend. It's really crowded uh, on the spot, but there is no problem because huge huge spot there. So just the beginning there. So, you know, you've been traveling around, and you've been pioneering and finding new spots to ride, and, yeah. like, what are some of the remote, like, the places that aren't so well-known that you've been traveling to? Uh, the, the, you mean the, the new spot I know now? Yes. Uh, in Italy, near Rome, it's called, um, the, the mountain is called uh, Les Abruzzes, and uh, it's a huge spot, there's uh, many mountains around, and just uh, 30 minutes, one hour from Rome, so you can see many, many people after work or on the weekend, like 100 people sometimes on the spot. And But there is no problem. The spot is so huge there. It's, so it's beautiful. It's good for beginners, experts. You can go up here, free, free, ride, free ride down. It, it's a perfect spot. And so now you're in the U.S. for a couple of months doing um, demos, and and a lot of people don't realize you were you're the world champion snow kiter, and you basically dropped off the tour. And so why don't you talk about what you're doing? Uh, right now, yeah, no, I just I just quite the the, the contest tour in, for the winter tour, but still some competition all, all around. There is two actually in uh, in U.S. So I'm here to find new spot to do those two competitions, to have fun, to show to people it's possible to snow kite behind the house, or just to show what is possible with the kite, actually. And, and a lot of people don't know this, but you're also really good on the water, and you spend summers, isn't it, in New Caledonia? Uh, it's a French Polynesia, Tahiti. Tahiti, okay. So you, yeah. so you, and actually, in one of my magazines. We featured a photo of you okay. jumping huge, and and I, I put it in there specifically because, like I don't, like I said, a lot of people don't realize that you you're a really good water kiter too. Uh, I don't know if I'm good, but uh, it's for sure it's fun because after after a big after you ride some big mountains, some steep hill, it, it looks really easy on the on the water, especially especially on the on the flat water. So. I was looking for some waves, and now I live, I live in Tahiti, so I've got some big waves, and it's really fun there. And I, I still use my uh, my foil there, so because there is no beach, it's perfect spot. And you know, you've been kiteboarding and pioneering spots for years, and you've obviously, when you first put the two together, a lot of people don't understand that you have a really strong professional snowboarding background. And sure. why don't you talk a little bit about that? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I did uh, I did some uh, snowboard competition for, for almost 12 years in a World Cup, a freestyle. I did the Olympics. Uh, that, that was a, 
quite good time for sure. I did some crazy freestyle stuff and jump cliff, some big mountain like Alaska. So it was quite easy to do some freestyle tricks with the with the kite. And now I do some pretty big one, I think. And it's still only the beginning. I saw a, a video clip of um, Paul Motz's video of you. Yeah. Um, and you do a little interview in there. And, you know, why don't you talk a little bit about, like, what kind of gear are you using when, when you go up there? Like, what kind of board and what kind of kite? Uh, the, so the, the, board, the, the board is pretty much the same as before. Like a normal snowboard, there is no difference. Just the 160 centimeters and it's still the same. It's an apple board. And uh, I use some new bindings, like like flow, like the same system of flow bindings. And the the special thing is when when you jump that high, it's to put a, a climbing harness with your normal harness to have the the double security just in case something break or something like that. But everything is the same. You have the the same style as a snowboarder before. And with the kites, and what kites are you using this year? Uh, I use the same kite as uh, everybody actually, the the frenzy the frenzy kite. But, and uh, most of the time I use the 12 or 14 meters to go to go high and fly uh, against the wind. Now, what made you decide that you didn't want to do the tour this year, the the, the winter tour? Oh, I just oh, I just decided to to change. You know, after three years, it's always good to 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 have some uh, some change. And there is new new federation, so there is new people to to meet and. Oh, it's uh, it's always good to change. Just see, it's better. You have more time to to see new countries, new spots, and uh, it's perfect that way. It's a good promotion, I think. And and what do you think about all these people that are getting into snow kiting? And I mean, there's some guys that are coming up that are getting pretty good. Yeah, yeah, it's, they're getting really good and really fast because they, they can see now the the level of the other guys. So it's easy for them. The the foil are good. The kites are good. I mean. And oh, it's uh, everybody are coming from different spots like surfing, skateboarding, wakeboarding, from kiteboarding, and from ski, from snowboarding, from ev- everywhere. So it's a good mix, and the sport is growing really fast. It, it's going to be unbelievable in a few years. What do you think about some of the spots that we have here in the United States? Oh man, the, in US it's it's big. It's big like uh, like US, <laughs> and uh, I can't wait to see a uh, new. But, and uh, oh, I love it. I love it here. Yeah. I'm, I'm just get ready to to go right now. <laughs> yeah, it looks like we got a good winner too. So your guys are headed out. Where you guys are going to be on the, you know, Brian's tour that he was talking about, the Ozone Snow Kite Free Ride, and um, supposedly you're going to be there. You're going to be barbecuing up and DJing and doing all that kind of stuff. Yeah, and music and jump and uh, yeah, it's going to be fun everywhere for sure. <laughs> Where can more people find more information about you? Do you have a website? Uh, just on the Ozone website, actually. Ozone Kite USA or flyozone.com. Flyozone.com. You can check out photos of Guillaume. You can also check out photos of of Chasta on my website, asnews.net and kbmag.com. And see you soon, maybe or. Maybe in Snowcat Rodeo or something like that. Yes, I, I'm gonna try and I'm gonna try and make it up to um, to Skyline okay. to that event, and yeah, hopefully we can cross paths and maybe you can teach me some of your tricks. Yeah, sure, with pleasure. You should come. Hey, and you know what I have to say? You've definitely learned to speak English a heck of a lot better, and I pro- and I and I know that I did not learn how to speak French. <laughs> Perfect. I will teach you the, some French word. Yes. Well, hey, thanks for your time, and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks a lot. All right, we'll talk to you later.